Hello, I'm Jason. Welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. Uh, in this section, we're finally going to take the skills that we've been building over the last several sections and put them all to use. And that is, we're going to finally learn how to begin to balance these redox reactions. And you might look at me and say, well, what's the big deal with balancing? We've done balancing before. Who cares about that? It's got to be easy, right? Well, the trick is with redox reactions, it can be a little trickier than what you've seen so far. And the main reason, to be honest with you, is that most redox reactions that you're going to see in this kind of class anyway, are going to occur in solution, which means that you're going to have ions floating around. Remember how we did the net ionic equation and we saw that you can have, you put you know, potassium hydroxide or something in a, in, in a water solution and mix it with some other stuff. The potassium hydroxide is going to dissociate, it's going to break down. You're going to have the potassium ions floating around and then you're going to have the hydroxide ions floating around. So if you do uh, all these things and have these redox reactions and solutions, most of the time you're going to have ions floating around, which means charged, uh, charged in entities. So normally when you're balancing a reaction, like from before, all you're doing is you're looking to make sure the elements balance, you know, make sure the oxygen's the same on the both sides and the hydrogen's the same and everything else. That's fine. But in a redox reaction, since everything is already broken down into ions, then you need to be able to look at the atoms and balance the atoms on both sides, you know, the elements, but you also need to be very careful and balance the charge transfer because that's really what's going on in a redox reaction, remember? You've got something that's being oxidized, it's losing those electrons, and then you've got something that's being reduced and it's gaining those electrons. So you have to look at the elements and make sure that, that you have the same number of atoms on both sides, that's true. But if you're losing so many electrons from, from this guy here, and then another guy's gaining so many electrons, you have a second constraint. You have to make sure that those electrons that are being transferred are balanced. So it's very difficult to do that just by looking at a big long reaction uh, when you have ions and solution like that. So what we're going to do in all the methods that you'll, that you'll find in your book and your class do is you'll be breaking these redox reactions into these half reactions so that I can see exactly how many electrons are going this way and how many electrons are going that way in the other half reaction. Once I have it into two half reactions, I can play with those half reactions to balance the elements, but to also balance the charge that's being transferred. Because it's not balanced unless the electrons are balanced, because that's just the way life is. If you lose five electrons, something else has got to gain the five electrons. And if you don't take that into account, you're not balancing the thing correctly. So let's do an example. This is a, actually, believe it or not, a fairly simple example. Um, Let's say, 